he said, I'm going to be talking about testing today. Uh, but first of all, let me thank you for having me here. I'm actually, as I said, from Spain, but I'm uh, working in Brotswap, in Kolstad. And I'm really happy to be in Warsaw talking to you today. It's really special for me to travel around Poland and everywhere. And yeah, I've been several years into the front-end community and talking to people, it's, it's great always. And in return to this opportunity you are giving to me, I'm going to talk today about one of the most interesting topics, which is testing. <laughs> and I will introduce you to Jess and especially to Snapchat testing. Uh, but before that, let me introduce myself. Uh, my the name was actually pronounced quite okay. My name is Ferran. Uh, I work at Colstech. As uh, we were told, we are a consultancy company and we are specialized in React Native. And React, we organized React Native Europe uh, a couple of weeks ago. It was quite great. I suggest you to take a look at it. And one of, of the core things in Colstech, part of writing applications, of course, is testing those apps and code reviewing those apps. And today I'm going to be talking about, about this experience I have in the company and how we introduce testing and how we make our apps better and easy to maintain and even very fun. So first of all, let me make a quick introduction to Jess because I'm not sure how many of you know what is Jess. Can you raise your hand? One, two, three. If I ask like this, somebody else? <laughs> okay, so basically Jess is a JavaScript testing framework. It's developed by Facebook. It was uh, developed together with React. And it's using Facebook with a large code base to test their JavaScript code and also React code. So it, it works pretty well for testing JavaScript, but it works also pretty well for testing React and all these JSX that you know React has. And this is example from the website. So this code should be familiar to you, how it does a add function. And you might notice in the title of this talk there is something about the new Jest. And Jest has evolved a lot during uh, this past year, like crazy. And this is from their website, and it was totally different a year ago. Now there is easy setup, so you install Jest, and it comes with everything you need. It comes with testing coverage, and it comes with uh, instant feedback watch mode. Um, it comes with a really powerful mocking system. Before it was kind of core, it was an image for mocking, now it's considered advanced feature, which is not really advanced, but it's really powerful about mocking anything you, you need. And there is also this guy here, snapshot testing. And we will talk a lot about this today. Um, snapshot testing, it's basically a way to test your code. And it's basically a way to generate a service file, an output file. Uh, even an input, you will generate this output file. And we can test almost anything. Uh, I will show you examples how we test React components and how we test other kind of code. And I know this uh, description of Snatch is a big bag, so I always like to show with this, giving an example. And I would like to start for going into Snapchat's degree in how I see people testing their code, especially in React, uh, how I see companies testing their code, how I see clients testing their code, and they use something called shower rendering, uh, and I used to call it copy-paste mechanism. Let's see. So I read this uh, React application, and in fact it's React Native, but it doesn't really matter. We have component view, you can think on diff in the web, and we have text component, you can think of paragraph in the web. And also with React Native, we use kind of inline styles. So this application, it's going to fetch um, GitHub repositories that contain React Native Word, and it's going to sort them by its number of stars. Um, in this code, the only difference you can see here is inline styles. If we click into an item, it's going to be green, so it's kind of selected state. So you might see here, if the all the items have a style, styles.item, which is the base style for any item, and then selected, it will have styles.select. Let's see how 
we could test this. This is real. Oh. Um, we use a utility call enzyme for testing in here. Uh, or as much as we will not need it if we don't want, but in here it's easier to, to use enzyme because we can actually represent this React component and we can work with it. Their example is there is a button, we can simulate the click and we can see what happens. So here we're going to render this component, I call it repository item. And here I don't pass the selected property, so it's not going to be green. And I can test it like this. It contains this output when I render it. And as you can see, this is actually I went back to my code and I copied and pasted. And I call this the shallow testing or copy paste. And for the selected item, it's the same. It just changes this style property because it also has styles that selected. And yeah, you could say okay, uh, you could create a function for all this code, and it's going to be shorter because there is a lot of common stuff. But it really scales pretty bad. And what it actually happens is you stop writing those tests. Um, so what can we do better here, or what people do here? And yeah, somebody said I should add the name when I add some code, so I'm going to call myself here. <laughs> and it said that recreating this bigger picture, it gets so repetitive that we tend to test only dynamic parts, only the parts that change, right? So in this case, um, what I'm going to do here is that for the item that is not selected, I'm going to find this style property, and I'm going to check it only contains the styles.item, which is the base styling. So it's fine. And for the repository item, I will pass is selected prop, so it's going to be green. And I check that it contains base style item and selected item in the form of an array. And you could say that this is enough, it's very well test. And we will see if that's true. So now there are new requirements in our app. Project manager comes, right, and you're trying to hide from him, but he gets to you. And he will ask to you, okay, when I click this item, uh, apart from the game color, I would like it to span and to show a description of the repository. So we go to our code and we add this. If it's selected, show me the description. If it's not, what is going to happen with the test we write the role previously? So the full shell test is going to break. And this is good. We change the UI, it should break. And the other test, the dynamic part test, that I'm calling, is not going to break. And this is bad. We can upload this code, we can commit this code, we can push it. Imagine on Facebook, if they commit the code, uh, it will pass your circle CI, Travis, whatever you use. It's going to be green, and then you will see in your model something that not spec. <clears throat> so for fixing this, for the full shower test, we need to come back to the test that was represented in this selected item, and we need to add what is missing. So again, I'm going to the code and I'm copying it here. And for the dynamic part, we need to remember, and this is the, the main problem, we need to remember we are humans, some point forget about this. So we will finish with code that is partially tested, code that is not tested, because here we are actually checking those new cases. But if you don't add those, the test will continue to pass. And this is actually painful. And Jess always states to be painless JavaScript testing. Right? This is painful because we want our test to break, as we saw, but we don't want this way to write them. We don't want all this copy paste. And here, I think, it's when we are ready to talk about snapshots. So snapshots are coming from this need, where Facebook engineers were complaining about the same I'm talking right now, and they were saying, look, we have to spend more time uh, writing tests than writing our code. We will not write. We just want to write a test that ensures me this component, this function, this piece of code is not going to change unexpectedly. And I want to write this quick, and I want to maintain it fast, I want it to scale. So I'm going to show you about snapshots and how 
they are trying to solve this problem. First, I will show you the same example with the same component, then we'll go to another code that is not React code. Um, here we use this render utility, small package from React, so we can actually represent this component as a JavaScript object and we don't really need to fake a DOM or a native mobile environment. And with JS, we can do expect to match snapshot. And for the selected repository, exactly the same. And what this is going to do, is going to generate snapshot files. Let me show you those files. All right. So, for the first example, it generates this big file here. We have the first view. It has all the properties by default for React Native. It has the style. It has the nested view. It has our first steps with all the styles. Repository name, in this case, is test one and the numbers of stars. Um, one thing that's worth saying here is if you update your framework, you update, we update React Native almost every month, and if there is some property that actually change, the snapshot will fail also, and this is, this is nice. Um, for the second case, when the repository is selected, we have exactly the same snapshot, but you can see that this style here, it's an array now, so it contains the base style item, but it also contains the green color. And I know those snapshots are big, but we will come to this, because today I will present you actually quite new solution about that. <clears throat> let's go back to slides, save place. So let's see what's happened now when we get these new requirements in our app and we have those snapshots. Because here is where they start to shine. We were we create two files, we push it to our repository, and, and then what happens? We have this new requirement, remember, expanded item, we see the description. We will get this error message. Our first first test will pass because the not selected item is the same, but selected item just will complain and they really work hard in these error messages. Um, so it's gonna say, look, you have this snapshot stored but we receive this change. This is unexpected change. And then is when you have to take a decision. Because your test is broken. So if it's expected, you can just run js minus u test name, and it's going to regenerate this number. If it's not, you go and fix it. And we will see how this flow works, because you might think, OK, so I'm gener regenerating this snapshot all the time, and my test will always pass. But here's when we will stress for reviewing, for requesting, and we'll talk more about this. But let me show you first more usages of snapshots. I'm very showing React components, but yes, we use a lot of state management library. A lot of people ask directly, okay, go use Redux. So I include Redux in this small app, and it's not needed. And I'm going to show you that I also found that testing Redux has a lot of repetition. Testing Redux is really easy. Redux are just based on poor functions, and poor functions are really easy. But it gets repetitive. Even if you don't know about Redux, let's check out this code, because this is JavaScript. So we have a, a function, it gets initial state, gets an action, and depending on the action type, it's going to return you a new state. And the way we work with reducers is we are not mutating the state, but we're generating a new one. So here I'm using spread operator. So here is the action for when I'm getting these repositories from GitHub. And when it's success, this loading is going to be false, and I'm going to save the date. How we can test this? First case, same as the component. I'm going to my initial state. I'm copying pasting it here. I'm changing what is different, so I expect this function with this initial state, with this action, to equal this output. And I'm thinking, okay, let me do it better, because I know about spread operator, object design, right? So in the second case, I'm just adding what 
I want to be sure it changes, the state it changes, and I'm spreading over it with the initial state, and it's also okay. But in the second case, I'm actually doing the exact same thing reducerously. I'm doing the code twice, and I don't want to do this, at least. So in the last case, we can also snapshot this. Remember, with snapshot, we can output anything that can be serialized, so it's going to be an object, and it's going to look like this. This snapshot is not that big, and we can really read here, I think, in a nice way, how it's gonna, how our state <coughs> is gonna look like after this action. And we will see that we can even make it look nice, make it look nicer. We'll see that later. Relax actions. I show you here a more complex action. If you know, relax action usually are objects, but in this case, this is a thing action. So we return a function, and it has side effects. It's not really pure, it does some stuff inside. It depends on the case, it's gonna fetch success, or it's gonna dispatch, sorry, success or failure. And here, because this is not a pure function, I need to do some stuff like, you see that I use fetch, and in my unit test, I don't really want to fetch real data. They might run on time. And I need to mock it and just provide this capability to mock. I don't need to find it somewhere else. And I'm not going to explain how to mock fetch here, but I will give you the repository with all this code, and you can check it there. Um, so how can we test this? Let's test a success action. And as I said, I'm going to mock fetch. And I say, hey, just return success with this data. And then I'm going to dispatch an action and, and check what what happened. There is also a mock store here. You can use the real one, but actually you, you can create an object um, store um, that when you dispatch, it's going to save the data that are dispatched in an array, and get actually just showing those. Failure, the same, I mock an error and I use expect to match snapshot. First one, it's gonna look like this. I think this is also nice to read, so, okay, when there is a success case, you have dispatch AP request, so I can change my state to loading two, and I can show some loading state, and then I see you dispatch a success with data, with the data I sent. With the failure, it's the same. It's gonna dispatch a request, it always dispatch this request, it has failed, it goes to the patch, and it shows me, hey, I dispatch a failure with this error. I really find this useful for Redux, so I, I suggest you to try it. Mm, next thing, let's go back to those big snapshots, because when i been writing this, those are based in a couple of articles I wrote, and I was talking about benefits and things that are not so good. It's always good to check what is not so good. And I think, oh, those snapshots are very big. And every time I want to check a different drop or a different state, I need to generate a new snapshot, and it's super similar to the previous one. And I'm all the time checking the different. Do you remember before we checked the snapshot and we found, OK, here is the style with the green color. It's So there is Nachot from Miho Kirchawa. Um, he joined my company recently, and in the first day I was talking to him. He's a chess core contributor. I was talking to him, and look, we have this, and I always thought we should be able to compare those snapshots, read something smaller for different states. So we were talking about this one afternoon, and I was talking, he was writing, and he got this library one day. Uh, and I'm going to show you how this works. In jest, you know, we have expect, we have expect, you can expect something to be true, you can expect some object to be equal to another, if equal, and you can extend expect, you can add your own matchers to jest. And you can add also your own serialization, we will talk about this a moment after. Uh, so I import, to match diff snapshot from snapshot diff, and I extend 
expect from chess. You can do this, this is also worth mentioning, you can do this in only one test because chess run all tests in a sandbox. So everything you do in one test is not going to affect the others. And you can add it in one test or you can add it globally, you can set, set up chess at this and it will work for any test. What we can do with this? We can test our repository item that is not selected, and I'm calling this, as you see in the A annotation, base item. And in the B annotation, it says selected item, because the, we expect to match this snapshot with selected item. And what this is going to generate is a file with the difference between those two snapshots. It's going to look like this. So our second big snapshot can become something like this. We use the serialization to show it in a nicer way. So actually, if you paste this snapshot to git, put it in a block called div, you will see green and red colors. Um, so the red color is the base item, contains the base style. And you can see the green color, which is the selected item, contains also in an array the base style, and the selected style green, and it also contains the description, the expand part that's only from the selected item. And I think it's worth to say that we can have the best of both worlds. You can use it, you can not use it, but I feel it's very useful to generate a big snapshot of my base component, and then I can generate smaller ones, the difference between state and props in this component. Because really, it's all about us. It's all about reviewing this snapshots, if they are small, if they are easy to read, it's easier for us. <coughs> you can do the same with the reducer example. I know the previous reducer state snapshot was small, but if imagine you had a huge state or, I don't know, it's a different function, you can actually check what is the difference between the initial state and the error state. And it's going to only show you what is exactly different. This is one way to make your snapshots nicer and smaller, there are more ways. And here is when we come back to what I previously said about add snapshots real time. And you can write your own custom ones, so you can actually make that snapshot look as you are. If you check ReactConf from months ago from this year, uh, they were rendering emojis, it was quite fun, I recommend it. But let me show you an example here. Remember the snapshot I reducer? It was uh, printing an array of objects with fake data. And one might say, OK, this is, this is nice, but actually I, I would like to see it in a different way. Maybe you can match it how it looks like in your font. So we can, again, use expect, and we can add our, not, our own serialized. So here I check, okay, I know this object has an ID property, so if it's there, I want to print it in a different way, use a string. And then, this uh, add snapshot, it will work in this test file, as I said, or you can do it globally. But then when I match snapshot here, when I write this test again with my repositories reducer, it's going to look different, it's going to look that, that way, the way I said it should be. So imagine the possibilities you can do here, anything you want. Instead of stars, you can rather the remote. Uh, I also want to show you more nice examples of this uh, that I didn't do. So for example, there is this repository about pretty algorithms. And for example, they write a binary search algorithm, and they write a custom serializer that uh, actually renders how it looks, how the output looks. It's not text, but they actually render how the algorithm works, and you can match snapshot to any step of this algorithm. Um, there are more crazy stuff. For example, in React, it is using React Native, and basically uh, the output, instead of being a text file, is a SVG. So they can actually match, uh, make it very similar to what you see in your point of screen. And I think now you know much more of snapshots. I thought 
all the use cases you can do. Uh, so you think probably that, okay, this, this guy is, is crazy, he's quoting himself, and he's telling me to Snapchat that, right? And so let's Snapchat everything. And I say, and, and here I want to quote a very interesting article when Snapchat came out that says that Snapchat are a complement for testing multiple places. You can use them, it's in jest. And classic assertion is perfectly fine for me. It's perfectly fine, and it's better even when there's clearly defined behavior. For example, I show the first first example from Jazz Web when we were testing a adding function. So it's not likely that one plus two is not going to be three, one, three, right? And here you can use classic assertion. But what about UI? What about components? They change all the time. It's really crazy, and the, the 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 way they change, they change fast. So our test needs to be also capable to adapt and change fast. And I think here is where <coughs> snapshots are really great. <coughs> Point here also is that we really need to stress the fact that pull reviews and pull requests are mandatory for snapshots to work. So I would say that if you work alone in a project, they might be a bit more dangerous, right? You are the only deciding, okay, those snapshots are fine, I'm like, updating them, I'm regenerating them, they are, they are good to go. But they will start to shine here also when you push them, because you need to push those files into your repository, and then your reviewer will see the difference with the snapshot. They can read the snapshot and they can see what actually happens with this code. They will see it in red and green. So pull requests are really, really mandatory code reviews in here. And this is also in my company because of snapshots. Uh, but I'm not only the one who says this, and I always like to see what other people say, so let's check some tweets. Uh, Mr. Poyer is the creator of Jazz, top contributor, and he says what I just said. It's material that you review them. Do not forget about it. You can see that it's like really good engineer, I really love his uh, videos, uh, courses, teaching all the time, and he he's was explaining to some guy that was complaining about it. Okay, I think it's not just shining two places. Error message, as we saw, on developing time, you can run just watch mode and you will see them on real time when you change your code, or in pull request time, where you see the actual difference. You can read the snapshots and you can understand the 